What's good, Joe? It's my review for this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Win. And, bro, this episode was fucking hype. Live, bro. Bucciarati, absolute fucking legend. Mista should be counting his fucking blessings. I legit thought he almost died there, man. And, yeah, also, guys, if you guys, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you might have noticed I was live tweeting. During JoJo, yes. For t this week, I decided to stay up till like two in the morning uh, and to watch JoJo. So I was doing some live tweet, in which um, you guys saw. If you guys were up at two in the fucking morning or whatever, you guys probably saw those tweets. Anyway, <laughs> enough jibba jabba. Let us just jump right into this into this episode. So we start this episode off with, of course, we left off last week. Mista again falling for the trap, and is like there's like a fish hook inside him. So from here, so the beginning of the part of the episode, the thing's getting deeper as as Pesci is just trying to reel him in. He's like, "Ooh, I wonder who I caught. Could it be Trish? But no woman could be this strong." And they just like, "You, this person is that weighs like well, I think he said what, 68 kilogram? I think, I think that's how much he said he weighed. I don't know how much that is in pounds." I didn't. I couldn't be asked to do the transit to do the conversions right now, but yeah, I think he said like 68 kilograms or something. Uh, yeah, I think it was like 68 kilograms or at least something around that that range. So anyway, Mist. So anyway, Mist is just trying to get out here, trying to figure out where it's going on. He tries to shoot at the. He tries to shoot at it first, which obviously doesn't work. No surprise there because his line is indestructible. Oh, uh, and then once he gets there, he's like, oh, I caught Mista. He's the guy with the revolver. <laughs> you know, Pesci thinks he on that he's hot. Sh why, why is my chair creaking so much? Apologies if y'all can hear it. I don't know why it's creaking so much. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to need to lose some weight or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so Misto, he realizes that it's Misto that's on the other end of that line, and he's trying to figure out where he is. And then he just starts reeling him in more and more and more, and just trying to get him back to where he is as the line is getting deeper and deeper and deeper uh, within him. It's up to his shoulder at this point. So then he's like, okay, time for some surgery. Fires one of his bullets, right? I think he, like, shoots it in his shoulder, I think, and has three of the uh, of sex pistols coming out there, and they tells him, you know, get the light out of me and pull it out. So the three grab them, and they try to pull out, but they're just taken for a ride and stays like, damn, looks like I'm on my own. Shit. So then Misa, so then Misa fires off two more of sex pistols over uh, by the window, where he's, where he's been moved to. And then we see the window. He's like, huh? What are you shooting at one of the passengers, Mista? <laughs> and then one of them crashes and, and one of them hits the one of the glass that are filled with ice cubes. And in the, uh, in there, and then we see number five, which we'll talk more about number five in a second. <laughs> number five was, has been goaded in this episode. So number five is like, oh, you guys, you need to aim a little bit to press the eyes out. And he's crying and everything. Number five's a bit of a pussy, but, you know, he kind of makes up for it in this episode, not gonna lie. So, <laughs> so anyway, so after him, so me, so then, so then, uh, like, two of the other ones are, like, kind of, like, directing the other three to him. Like, all right, guys, we only got one shot, stay sharp. And they're, like, trying to direct them and over there, and he gets them in the right, uh, to the right, I guess, trajectory or whatever. And they both, and often, like, kick the bullets out, and they all hit the ice, and they all hit the glasses, you know, destroying all the ice cubes. He's, um... Puts a oh no, the eyes and he drops a let go of his of of his fishing rod or his stand, I guess you could call it his fishing rod stand. Which actually I checked on I checked what the original name of the stand. It's actually called Beach Boy, obviously a reference to the Beach Boys. Honestly, I think I can prefer Fisherman, honestly, as a stand name <laughs> for that thing. I, I mean, I get the Beach Boy thing, it's a cute it's a nice little reference and it makes sense, but I don't know man. I feel like I prefer Fisherman. For that stand, because I think it makes more sense. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I love a rocky stand names, but sometimes I got to admit, I, I just prefer the localized versions of a lot of stand names, like uh, Shiny Diamond over Crazy Diamond, uh, uh, Reverb over Echoes, etc. Like, I usually prefer the original stand names, where they're just kind of like indifferent to them, but there are a couple ones where I'm like, uh -huh. It was so, and the localized one is better, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get shit for that for the jo from the JoJo community. I'm probably gonna get lynched by them in the comments, but uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> anyway, 
So what? So what's the once he's like trying to like scrounge up the pieces of uh, the ice ice cubes before they start melting, he's like ooh, and then Mista comes out there, and by this point the JoJo theme, the uh, part five or journal theme starts playing. Bum bum, bum 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 or Josuke. They all three really have sm it's really great themes. But Giorno's has been just been like probably the meme the hardest, probably. So I think low key it's probably between Jotaro and Giorno, probably my top two. I love I love a Josuke theme, especially when he was uh going up against um uh what the hell is that guy's name? The guy with the star tattoo. I forget his name. But yeah, I was like, you know, the team was playing there. I was hype. Anyway, nothing going off on other shit, other JoJo shit. So, uh, <clears throat> so once me, so then once, so once Fetch realizes the predicament he's in, he tries to run away. And of course, then this, then like this old guy just kind of like, just like falls on top. He's like, hey, uh, you need to help me. I was looking for a big juicy steak. But all I have the energy for is to take a good nap. And Patch is like, get off of me, you geezer. He falls to the ground even. And it looks like he's getting like the, I don't know, man. But was I the only one that thought this old man might look? He started eating him like a fucking zombie. <laughs> so Patch manages to get him out of the way. But he also gets one of his fingers blasted off from a, from a bullet. And one of the bullets just goes through right through his hand. So he's like, ah! And then, you know, Sex Pistols tell him, like, you know, you're good. You're good, um... Uh, you're good, Mista. And he walks into the door, and he like, and he unloads the gun and reloads it with like bullets coming out of his hat. I don't even know how he even why they're right there instead of like in his pocket or something. Like why? Legit, like opens the revolver up, and then like kneels his head, and then like puts his head down. The bullets just kind of like, fall off into the gun. And when I was found, they found that was rage. I mean, hey, if it works, it works. But still, I was like, bam, you, you don't have to, you could put them in, like, your pockets or something, but whatever. That means it's anime. The guy's just meant to look cool. So anyway, he loads up the gun and says, I'm going to ask you one question. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. And you probably may not even know the answer. You might not even have energy to. But I'm going to ask anyway, so deal with it. Ooh. You gotta love me some man. Absolute savage. So then, and so then he mentions that he's gonna like fire off like like fire off a bullet in those BIs next to that fugly nose or some shit. He's just gonna, he's gonna shoot him. He's gonna kill him. Yo. And the question was, where the hell is your partner? And and, and he says that he's going to do um count to two. Or, yeah, I was in Counter 2, it was like Uno, and then Dose, I think the other one was. And after that, I'm gonna you know, shoot you. So then he asked him, you know, where's your partner? He says, I don't know, man, I've been asked the same way. And then he's like, and he's like, I don't know, man, I've been wondering the same question. And then he's like, now die, Katsune. And while he's about to fire, that same old guy puts his hand on Mista's arm, the one where he's holding his gun, and be like, Please, sir, you have to help me! And I'm like, Who the fuck is this fucking Yeezer, my dude? Like, I damn, man. So the, so the dude's going on about stakes and shit. Mista's trying to get him off of him, and then he tells him that he's going to be, that he's going to be the end of his, that he's going to end his life. And he says, And now kill him, um, thankful death. And then. <clears throat> We found that old guy wasn't an old guy at all. It's actually uh, Pesci's brother. So then he starts. So then he's like. So he puts his hand on him, and then he starts like old, uh, excel aging, aging accelerately. He looks like he's like in his probably his fucking nineties at this point. Might be eighties. I'm not sure. Either way, the man looks fucking old. So and then he mentions the how direct touch is what can is what can uh, uh, direct touch accelerates aging faster than you know, just a mist. So, and then he goes on, they he starts beating the shit out, Pesci. And like, oh, you did, oh my god, it's you, big bro. You were so awesome. He, like, uppercuts him, and then he just keeps, and then he goes at him, calls him something to tell him, which I think means pussy. I'm not sure. I forget exactly what he said, but I'm pretty sure it means pussy. If you guys, if any of you guys are Italian, or <clears throat> speak Italian in the comments, please tell me more than what he meant there. Uh, down below. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, anyway. Afterwards. 
after, so afterwards, Misa, afterwards, Misa's on the ground. He's pretty much de almost dead at this point. And then he pulls out, and then he goes on about how we are kind, doesn't need to, like, you know, make jokes, or we do not fulfill, and we don't do empty promises, and all that bullshit. And then he unloads three bullets right into Misa's skull. At this point, I was shocked by this. Because, you know, with JoJo, well, okay, maybe not completely, nowadays. Because when we all remember how when Caesar died, that was, and, um, uh, what's his name in part one? When those two got, <clears throat> when those two got, guys died, they stayed dead, and they were like, oh shit. Then we had, um, then we had, um, eight, um, a Abdal in part three kind of died, but then came back, but then he died again. And that third time was permanent, the second time was permanent. Then we had, um, uh, Okuyasu. Almost forgot his name. Okuyasu in part four, where he kind of died, but then kind of was brought back to life ish. You know. So when it comes to JoJo and death, a rock is usually pretty is pretty certain about when a character dies. He never uses the fake out, and if he does, they'll get killed anyway. <laughs> like with Abdal. So at first, with this, when I saw Mista die, I was like, oh shit. It is me section dead. Now, it was, we were in 13 episodes, we're like, what, 15 episodes in on the series at this point? So, uh, so I was like, I was like legit gonna be a little bit surprised if Rocky was going to kill me off this early and keep, and you know, leave him off the team. But then being so early, I mean, we still got like, what, like 20 some odd episodes still to go? Or, uh, 30 some odd episodes to still go? So, at this time, I'm a little shocked, but at the same time thinking, oh shit, I mean, like, how is he gonna get brought back? This man got took three bullets to the fucking head. Like, that's pretty, that's pretty, you know, very, that's a pretty good punctuation mark on that. Like, yeah, Mista's fucking dead. And I didn't even tweet out, did we just watch Mista die or whatever. So yeah, I, I, that's, well, I was shocked by that. And, so anyway, after, after, after we see, after we see the possibility of Mista dying, which, like I mentioned before, was actually pretty shy. I never, I didn't think we were actually going to see it. And he goes, like I mentioned before, three bullets to the head. I mean, I'm sure all of us, or at least the majority, thought like, yo, yeah, Meast is probably actually dead. So then we, so then they head over to the, um, uh, back to the, uh, con back to the main room where like the drive, where the controls are for the train and everything. Because they said that because Apache said that there, they felt in the pr a presence there. So he's looking around trying to figure out. Uh, where, where this other presence is, he's like, I don't know, big bro, and then he goes on about how his intuition is shit, he's not very smart, and then, and then, the, uh, the other guy's like, the men the blast is like, Pesci, 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 no, you are very smart, and you have a brilliant intuition, like, he's trying to help out his brother, while he's like, caressing his face and shit, and he's like, mirror, and like, also when he was going on with the whole pussy thing, he was also like, soup like, mirror inches from his face, Close enough to where I'm like, yo, fam, we gonna see some fucking gay shit up in here? Like, what the fuck is this shit, man? Like, I'm like, now, we know JoJo is no stranger to gay shit. I mean, it's become a bit of a running meme within the JoJo fandom about how about JoJo is low-key gay. And then Part 5 kind of go went all the way with it with, with that accident, which actually having a gay couple in there, which both died gruesome deaths. <laughs> So anyway, so yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like, I legit, I'm watching this show episode, I'm watching this part of the episode, I don't know whether or not I'm watching fucking JoJo, or Only God Forgives, you know, <laughs> shout out to all my peeps, I've seen Only God Forgives, in which I actually recently saw uh, a few days, I think, yeah, two days ago, um, on Friday, excellent movie, highly recommend you guys check it out, as well as Drive, Drive is fucking amazing, it is a fucking masterpiece, my dude. Absolutely love Drive Man. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. So, so I just like I was like legit watching that. And I was just like, bro, what the hell is this shit? So he's caressing his face and he tells him, yo, Pesci, you know, was there anything you saw? And he's like, oh yeah, there was a turtle underneath this chair, and I was gonna look else, but there was a good look in this chair, but I got distracted. So it looks like he didn't actually see the turtle the first time, but he but he was gonna look there. So he looks under there. There's nothing. No turtle. And then he's like, well, that's embarrassing. He's like, no, 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 Pesci. I think you're also, then he finds some uh, shit on, by the chair. And he's like, this is fresh shit. And this ain't rat shit. So, some, so we got ammo here. Shit. So, and then he looks around trying to figure out where he is. And then he like, open, they like, 
and like beats in like this like compartment by the controls and reveals a turtle. He's like, it's a turtle, you know. And while this is going on, uh, he notices that oh, he sees all the guys, he Trish and everyone. Everyone's like, oh shit. And, but then uh, Pesci notices that there's someone not there. And he says, someone might pull the Houdini on us, which I like that little reference there of Houdini. <laughs> and while this is going on, you see Bruno kind of in like some. Weird background that's moving around. He's like, it looks like he's in an alternate dimension. He's inside one of his zippers. He is. And then they're looking around, and then Pesci's like, oh, I know who it is. It's Butarati. He's not in there. And the other guy's like, you know, who cares? Just get Trish, and let's go. So then the zipper starts to open up. And, oh, actually, right before that, actually, right before we get to the whole stuff with Mista and everything, or uh, with, um, with, with, with Butarati, we head back over to Mista. We see a spirit and that white stuff leaving his body. So we know, so which is a good enough sign, in, which is pretty much a sign in JoJo for, yeah, you fucking dead. The fuck is dead. And then we see these three. Then we see the three bullets just kind of come out of his skull, and they just and they just like some blood comes out. And then you see number five. And uh, I tweeted out. I don't have my phone on, but I was like, I think I, I was something along the lines of um, number five is is go is a goat or is the goat something along those lines because you're number five saved. And so while it's, so while it's going, and then he's like, yeah, they and then and then uh, Mista starts to wake up again. And he's like, oh. Five, and, and number five is the crowd like, yeah, take the last piece of the eyes. You know, he tells, and he really tells to take one of them to Butarati. Number six has already been revived, and he's on his way there. So, and then he tells him to save the eyes from the other ones that he doesn't need anymore. And at this point, I'm still kind of like a little iffy on whether or not is dead or not, because we see the spirit thing leaving his body, and he makes it sound like he is going to die, or that he is about to die. Uh, that he might die. So Mista still could very well still be dead. Mista could very well die in this stuff and could very well be dead. We don't know yet. I think Mista at this point Mista's pretty much still alive, but we'll have to wait and see on that. So anyway. So then we, so then we head back to Putarati and then he opens up the zipper and then goes in for, and goes in and attacks uh and goes and attacks Pesci and the other guy. So Butarati sends Zipperman out on the guy in the black suit, because we don't... I mean, we got his name, but I just don't know how the fuck to pronounce it, so it's call it the guy in the black suit. So he goes over here, and one thing I've noted about Butarati's stand is that his stand does not have its own kind of phrase when it punches, like, uh, Star Platinum has... And, you know, the Zawaro, though, and, um... And uh, gold and golden wind both had on Muda 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 the chat Muda and your uh, Josuke had you know that and I, I'm pretty sure even um 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 reverb and the hand also had their own individual names as well or individual sound boots are out said just just punches there's no sound to it and it just feels wrong man does anyone else feel like that or is it just me that just it just feels off when I don't hear the and I don't hear a muda 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 you know I don't hear any of that man it's you know it's just kind of weird man I'm just like yeah hey, it doesn't it just doesn't sound right you know so anyway Higgy he goes over there he tells uh and you know number six tells him hey make sure you don't get direct contact the agent gets faster with direct contact. So he makes out for that, and he tells Pesci to go over and get the turtle. But then Butarati leaps out of that little, like, zipper he has, goes down to the floor, and super kicks Pesci right into the window, knocking him out cold. That was fucking hype. And so, then he returned, and then he manages to land a couple of punches on uh, on, on, the, on the other guy. Uh, one on his chin, opening his zipper there, and one in his midsection, kind of opening up his zipper there, on his right side. And so he kind of falls, and then he falls down, and he's like... I'll admit you're strong. And then he eventually go, and then they keep going on for that. And then he eventually, t and then he eventually says that that he starts to be like, "You fool! You come at me with you fool! You come after me full force, full throttle with your stand." And because Butcherat is also a little out of breath as well, and he mentions how, and then you, and then because of and because of him, you're know, going up, you're going full throttle. As he said, the higher the horsepower, the hotter the engine. And since you're one of modern intelligence, I'm sure you've got to my trip. I.e., and the acceleration that resumes because of, you know, his body temperature is increasing because he's just, you know, he's going right, he's going full throttle on this guy. So, and then he grabs Bucciarati and then he just kind of stand there for a minute. He thinks he's won. And then Bucciarati's like, you fool, I knew this from the start. 
And then he's like, and then he goes on about how he's going to protect his friends. Any capo worth their salt. I love that line right there. He says, any capo worth their salt knows this. And then next thing we see is that there's a zipper, like about two zippers connecting to like the end, end of the of the cockpit and, it, uh, and leading out to the outside. And he's like, you fool, you wouldn't dare. And he's like, both my goals are easily obtainable. And then he op- and then next thing we know, the zippers open up and Butcheraki just throws them out of the train and that's where the episode ends kind of like whether or not he'll be able to get in, get out or not does Butcherati win does Butcherati go on his own we don't know yet we'll find out next week so yeah that's about all the episode this episode was awesome I'm we're still not completely 100% sure about Mista it looks but from the sta- from the fact that the stand is still alive number 6 is still alive there's a good chance Mista's probably going to survive this but you know wait who knows maybe you rock you'd be like you know fuck it I'm going to kill Mista you know let me keep him dead you know I guess we'll find out next week, ladies and gentlemen. So overall, I'm going to give this episode a 9.5 out of 10, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Flag, and links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.